All right, guys, well, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. It's a special edition because I'm here at the Polestar Canada launch in downtown Toronto for the launch of the Polestar 2 coming to North America. And I'm here with Gregor Hembro. How are you, Gregor? Good to see you, Good Ken. to meet you. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you very much for inviting me. I appreciate it quite a lot. Um, I'm so stoked to be here because as my viewers know, I've been following Polestar since you guys launched and, yeah. and did all your thank you. coming out. And I've been very excited about the brand. Um, we will talk about the marketing stance in a sec as far as sure. where you want to go, but uh, I'm excited that you guys are here. Um, and I don't really want to talk a lot about technical aspects of the vehicle because I think a lot of my viewers have known that and follow that, but kind of understand the business plan. So, um, you know, you launched just a little while ago. You're going to be building these in China, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Yeah. Polestar 2 is built in Lukau, okay. China. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the ones will be built in Europe. Is that correct? The, the ones will be built in Chengdu, China. Oh, okay. China so, as well. So yeah. both of our vehicles that yep. are coming out will be built in a Chinese footprint. Okay. Okay. And just for viewers who don't know, the one is the hybrid. It's, in fact, the fastest hybrid that's out out there with the biggest battery, if I'm not mistaken, from a plug-in hybrid. Is exactly. That correct? It's yeah. got the longest range battery yeah. that's going to be available in a hybrid. Yeah. Uh, it's a uh, 195,000 to 199,000 Canadian dollar. Okay. It's the first time fiber. I've heard Canadian pricing. So carbon fiber, lovely, lovely. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. Um, yeah. Zero to 100 in just under four seconds as well. So make sure you wear those brace collars for your next snapping back. Uh, so obviously this is going to be similar uh, tactic that we see in a lot of automakers where they start at the higher end, more premium luxury vehicle, then they start coming down to more affordability at different levels. So the Polestar 1 is going to be a limited run, my understanding. Yes, exactly. Yep. So Polestar 1 will be building 500 globally per mm -hmm. year. Yep. So it'll be a very uh, niche vehicle yep. for a niche segment mm -hmm. as well. And yes, you're absolutely right. That'll be the first car to come off. Mm -hmm. We start production on those vehicles um, actually this month. Wow. So okay. the, the yeah. Canadian customers aboard the car will be expecting them sometime about Q2 of okay. 2020. So just as the thaw comes, the cars will be arriving as well. Excellent. Um, the Polestar 2 vehicle that you mm -hmm. see in front of you here, we start production in spring. Spring, okay. With um, yeah. a summer 2020 delivery into the North American market. Into North America, and so not just Europe as well, but North, timing North America at the same time? European vehicles plan? will yeah. come a little earlier, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, our specifications will be a little bit more highly contented, and we'll bring the cars in in the spring. Okay, so on that specifications, what, what are you changing for the North American market versus some of the other regions? Standard content of mm -hmm. the car. Okay. Normally, the North American uh, customers will uh, have an expectation of, of, of a higher content level. Okay. Mm -hmm. So things such as what we would call pilot assist in the vehicle, mm -hmm. which has the, um, the, um, the, the lane departure wa mm -hmm. warning, excuse me, and also on Auto cruise control, adaptive Auto cruise, cruise control and adaptability stuff. as yeah. well. Um, things as uh, dual motors. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there will be, um, some of your viewers might have a global footprint and understand that in some markets we'll start off with uh, also an availability of a single motor. Yep. Okay. Um, I believe for the North American market, that's not something right now that we're interested in. Okay, so it's strictly all wheel drive, dual motor, Dual configurations motor. to start with different trim levels, different packages, Actually, color patterns, or are you going to simplify that? Very simplify. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think that we've done a lot of market research and we've really understand that, that you know, of course the customers want to have an opportunity to take a look at the color and mm -hmm. the interior trim. Mm -hmm. But the way we'll go to the market is really just what our, we'll call is the intro package, one variant, mm -hmm. um, essentially two options on the car, the sports package, which you mm -hmm. see before yep. you, I don't know if your, your viewers can I see did, the wheel. I did, got some B-roll shooting uh, as we're talking, so it's a and beautiful then, package. A above right? and beyond that, a leather interior. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we actually anticipate a relatively low take rate on the leather interior. The mm -hmm. interior that comes with the car is a very unique, we call it a weave tech. Okay. And it's vegan friendly as well. I was just gonna ask that, so yes. perfect. Yeah, I get a lot of comments about that. Excellent, well, you know, it's a beautiful looking car. Now, the origin of Polestar, you know, obviously the Volvo brand's been around for years and, and in the Canadian market, it's a very well respected brand because, you know, we get a ton of snow. Um, and we, we love the durability. I mean, I just talked to somebody the other day that has a Volvo uh, uh, ICE car, and he's pushing 500,000 kilometers yeah. on that thing, and it's still going, so. Yeah, we all know. have a relative, a neighbor, yeah. or a friend that has Absolutely. a Volvo that's been around for 30 years. <laughs> that's and, it, and has darn it, right? Yes, exactly. You know, they're, they're built too good. Exactly. So what's your expectation? Because, you know, your, your, your quality is going to be, I assume, just as high, uh, and then we'll talk about safety, but what's your expectation to the marketplace? Well, it's actually that. I think that one of the benefits that we have is as Volvo is a strategic affiliate, mm -hmm. that the, the brand might be, but might be new, excuse yeah. me, mm -hmm. but the heritage is not. Yes. And I think that's one of the, the, the great platforms that we have to build upon is, is that you know, sometimes I like to think of as a 91-year-old startup. Mm -hmm. um, it's a brand, it'll be full electric. Our affiliate, the DNA of Volvo is obviously intrinsic in this vehicle. 
Um, we have a lot of help with the research and design, a lot of help with the industrialization of the product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you get in the vehicle and you look at, at, at the, the, the DNA of the Polestar, you feel the tactile finishes, you yes. see the fit and finish of it, you'll, you'll, re, you'll see the, the high level of quality that you bring on that. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that I think any brand new product can bring to the market. That's something that's yielded after 91 years of engineering. Exactly. Definitely big shoes to fill you know, from that marketplace. No so, doubt about yeah. it. But mm -hmm. um, again, uh, Again, having, having Volvo as an affiliate and learning a lot from them as well, mm -hmm. we build upon a lot very quickly. And obviously, you know, from a Chinese manufacturing perspective, they know how to build things. I mean, there's no doubt about that. We've got a great, uh, highly trained workforce, highly skilled workforce, uh, modern technology as far as that. So do you have any idea when to ramp up as far as volume production of the Polestar 2 that you anticipate for the first couple of years? Yeah, for sure. But um, we, we, we really don't go out and talk about our sales volume right now, that. but we're mm -hmm. talking in thousands okay, in the good. North American marketplace. Excellent. So this is not a car that's going to be uh, a long ramp up. Again, mm -hmm. I'll go back to the things that we just spoke about. Um, we have factory footprints. The Chengdu plant for the Polestar 1 is new. Mm -hmm. The Polestar 2 factory will be co-shared with okay. uh, an existing platform vehicle mm -hmm. from Volvo. Okay. So to that said, the tooling is there. The XC40 the old battery that just got announced, baby. The, the, pro the processes are there. <laughs> yeah. The workforce is there. Yeah. So in that end is, is that we'll be able to meet demand very, very quickly. So you will see a ramp up that will be a very short ramp up in meeting consumer demand in the marketplace very quickly. Excellent. Now, one of the things that I guess caught a lot of the world a little bit by storm was when you guys announced this, you directly said, we're going after the Model 3 market. We, we understand the value that Tesla's brought to the Model 3, you know, in that mid-level price, you know, that luxury sedan marketplace. Um, and you, you've gone and, and, you know, been pretty aggressive at targeting that. You know, what was the thinking there and why that? Well, I think it's 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 easy to see that a car would be cross shopped quite mm -hmm. a bit when you look mm -hmm. at the dimensions of our vehicle yes. versus the Model Three. When you look at the pricing, when you look at the customer, not only from a demographic point of view but a psychographic point of view, mm -hmm. there's obviously going to be a similar target customer in yes. mind. Mm -hmm. So when you took a look at who's in the marketplace already, it would be that. Mm -hmm. But. I also have to say is that you know t Tesla and Polestar have to do it together. Mm -hmm. um, the the sure. electrification movement is one that we're very proud of. Um, it is coincidental we're here today on, mm -hmm. a, on a day that Toronto just talked talked about the climate and, and climate change. Yes, we had mass protests today and in, exactly. uh, in marches on climate change. Exactly, it was, a, it was a good timing for that. <laughs> and, and together we'll we'll amplify the EV yeah. message as well. I believe that most of where our Conquest customers are going to be coming from, where is our customers going to be coming from, is, is that there's going to be an adap adaptation from internal combustion engine mm -hmm. customers as yep. this. I think that there's been a tremendous amount of the audience that have been curious about electric vehicles, um, but there's been certain blockers in the front or barriers in the sure. past, and it yep. might be that there might be a uh, you know, as an example, the electrical infrastructure yep. might not be on every single corner within mm -hmm. certain cities. And this is one of the reasons why we've elected to, to launch in Toronto as well. Okay. The robust EV infrastructure, yep. I think high consumer uh, adapt uh, adaptability, excuse yep. me, as well. Yep. Um, and then in beyond, beyond that, look at the product as well. I think mm -hmm. that this is a, a car that can really speak to the Canadian market and more specifically to the citizens of Toronto. Exactly. One of the things that is important to North America, mainly in I guess all parts of the world, but certainly Canada and North America, is the safety aspect of vehicles. We know that you know by looking at EVs that they are inherently much safer because of some of the rigidity that the battery packs uh, involve in some of the floor structure. Volvo has always been known as an extremely safe car. Tesla's getting high, you know, uh, uh, five-star plus ratings in both NCAP, uh, IIHS, and all the other organizations. How do you, uh, I know that this hasn't been run through the testing parameters yet in North America, but where do you expect that to, to fall? Uh, again, top of the category. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. That's a hallmark of the Volvo brand. Yep. Um, and again, them being an affiliate with Polestar, it becomes a hallmark of us as well. Mm -hmm. So safety is granted within this vehicle as well. Um, both active and passive. And one mm -hmm. of the things I talk about with regard to the standard options and features in the vehicle is, you know, such things as the, uh, within the intro package, we will bring, going back to the topics that we talked about, the autopilot, those yep. are things that we talk about that contribute to the safety of the vehicle as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So it'll be top of the category. Uh, it's not an option. 
on top of that. Excellent, excellent. One of the other unique features is that this, I believe, is the first vehicle to deploy an Android, uh, Android-based car system. Is that correct? It the is. It'll be the first system. car to the market, first uh -huh. car to launch okay. in the marketplace with Android embedded technology. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in practicality, what that means for me is a tremendous amount of convenience features for the customer. Mm -hmm. um, such things as vo voice recognition. Mm -hmm. um, my view is is that um, you know the advent of Apple with Siri and mm -hmm. then Google Assistant has yep. set the platform up above and beyond something that automotive OEMs cannot match any longer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, the apps that you would normally find on whether it be an Apple or whether it be an Android phone such as Spotify, mm -hmm. um, those are things that will be embedded. Okay. So the, the, the online experience in the vehicle will be something that a customer finds intuitive, mm -hmm. easy to interact with, and everything from navigating your, your, your radio station via voice to even your climate system. Mm, that doesn't mean that the buttons are going to be redundant, sure. so there's always going to be some sort of what we call all the um um, you know, the, the high function frequency yeah, area. Definitely not as minimalistic as the Model 3 is, as an by example. By no means yeah. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll still have the radio control button, uh -huh. but you can also turn it off via voice activation mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. We understand that that's what the customers are looking for. Quick circumstances to turn the radio up or down, put the flashers on and off, those type mm -hmm. of features, we'll leave the buttons there as well. Exactly. And the, this will come with an active uh, battery management, uh, thermal management system yes. for heating and cooling. Yes. Uh, you've done extensive winter testing, I believe, obviously of, of where uh, where Volvo comes from so I have no doubt that this is going to perform admirably in the snow in fact it'll be a hell of a ride I'm sure <laughs> on the yes, snow yes yes I, I, we, again with this comes the rigorous testing not only from the hot from the cold yep. in the temperature management system of the battery pack was paramount mm -hmm, absolutely and a couple last questions um, the warranty that's going to become standard with this in North America are you able to talk to that yeah, we, we will cover, we will follow very much the industry, so okay. it'll be um, eight year battery yep. warranty. Okay. And then 160K, we'll, I take yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. 100,000 yeah. miles in yeah. the US. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we will look at um, a four year, okay. uh, and then let me do the conversions, 50,000 miles, so we're talking just under 100,000. 60, 000. yeah, something like that, yeah, for sure. Kilometers. Excellent. Yeah, so bumper to bumper from that, and then of course you can always. Exactly, and in the Canadian market, we will also offer uh, the complimentary service will be part of the purchase price of the vehicle as well. Oh, excellent, which really the good thing about EVs is there's not a whole hell of a lot to service other than rotating tires because of uh, the instant torque, you can tend to wear the fronts down, in this case all wheel drive, exactly it may not be case. bad. Yeah. And you will have, um, are you piggybacking that service on an existing network of Volvo dealers or how is your service uh, methodology going to work? Very good out? question. So we will have Polestar spaces within our network. So okay. the, the, um, uh, the, the place for the consumer to interact with the vehicle would be a very small 250, 270 square meter space, okay. not unlike where we are today. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. So that's where the process would take place if a customer wants to come in and learn more about the vehicle okay. and meet with a, with a, with a, um, a space ambassador. We're going to okay. So that's from a sales spaces. perspective, a pre-sales perspective? Exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. we're, we're very clear that we know that a lot of customers will engage with the brand online yep. and also even transact online. Transact with, though, a Polestar retailer space. Mm -hmm. So we will mm -hmm. not be a direct sales model. We'll always have a retail Taylor um, co-joining with us okay. to engage the customer. Mm -hmm. um, then beyond that from a service, very good question. Mm -hmm. um, we will have the ability to utilize the Volvo service network okay. to take care of the cars when they need uh, in need of repair Excellent. as well. Are you looking to adopt something like uh, Tesla as well with a mobile service aspect to that? Is that we, something you're thinking about? We're looking at anything we do we yep. can mm -hmm. to actually make sure that the convenience factor for the customer is up there. So sure. things such as pickup and delivery for the customer okay. so they don't have to actually bring the vehicle to nice. a facility nice. for sure. Mobile repairs, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, everything is in being investigated and evaluated right now. Okay. And uh, when, uh, let me ask the most important question, sure. what kind of price point level MSRP are you starting with these, both in Canada and the U.S.? In the U.S. will be at 63000 okay. U.S. Mm -hmm. yep. before taxes yep. and before any federal incentives. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, the taxes will bring it up and the incentives will As long as that U.S. Fed thing is still in place, you'll, yep. be, you'll be fully exactly. qualified for that 75, up to $7,500. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, 69900 for the Canadian okay. pricing on mm -hmm. the car. Okay. So, yeah. uh, and that's, again, the only options on the vehicle yep. will be the sports package and yep. the leather interior. So you get a yep. very well-equipped vehicle for that amount of money. Absolutely. With a hardened warranty and a very hardened product as well. Absolutely. So, well, listen, I, I look forward to seeing these on the road. You're anticipating deliveries into Canada again at the uh, mid part of next year, is that correct? Yeah, Q3, would you say? Targeting July 2020. July? Okay, excellent, excellent. 
So you'll have a big splash, I guess, for your first customers and uh, We will be kind of launching stuff. the markets as yep. well as the car at the same time. Okay. So as the cars start to enter the marketplace, um, the first deliveries will make sure that we launch on a city. Yeah. So we'll be back in Toronto and um, I'm looking forward to seeing you there as well. I would love to be there, especially if you're going to be driving people around on these things. I hope to, to get a ride at some point. Uh, I think that'll, that's guaranteed. That'll be amazing. I love that. I love that. So you see a good uptake already in, in pre-orders. I know you can't give numbers. Everybody's pretty secretive, but you're happy with the uptake. We are sort happy of, with the update. To say, so that's a good sign. Absolutely. So uh, I would say that when the open doors um, come about in July, we're going to see a fairly rapid increase in market share mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also cars on the road as well. Excellent. Well, listen, thank you very much for having My me pleasure. here in your time, Gregory. I appreciate it a lot. And uh, yeah, you know, I'll stay around for a free drink and uh, listen to uh, the opening speeches and everything. But it's an exciting marketplace. And yeah, please check out uh, Polestar's website if you want more information and make that reservation. Uh, I just can't wait for this stuff to come. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Take care. We are a global brand. We will launch in nine countries, and one of those key markets is Canada. But we'll launch this electric startup performance brand around the globe. And it's a hugely exciting challenge for us to say, how can we do something different in the industry? How can we bring a car that's exciting? And we believe passionately, and it was fascinating for me to be in Toronto today and see the demonstrations, the activation that was going on with people talking about climate. And that's one of the things we're passionate about. One of the reasons we're here is we believe that the future of mobility needs to be electric because we know that air quality is something we have to do about. And above all, you've got a brand here. We call ourselves a 90-year-old startup. Okay, we're a startup. We're functioning as a completely independent brand, but we're owned 50% by Volvo, 50% by GE, two of the fastest growing automotive brands in the world. So this isn't a stab in the dark. It's a company that will build quality cars, but quality driver's cars. This will be a fantastic car to drive in. Great talk to you from the stats. Thank you for coming. Take your time, enjoy it, get to know the car, and I hope that you're as excited about it as I am.